Okay, Sunday morning. It's about 11.30. No, we did not get it fired up yesterday. Ended up spending the whole day helping the family out tear a shed down. That was reinforced to unbelievable standards. So, we're going to get her fired up today. Get her put together and hopefully by the end of the day we're going for a ride. Okay, custom car building 101. When you're putting something together that ain't supposed to be together, you're going to have problems. Here's the one I'm up to now. Got this tilt column out of a uh, Ram Charger 84. Fits perfectly in the truck. But when you're trying to put it onto a 72 frame, you go to put the stub shaft in. And you come down here and you're short. So, luckily I believe I'm a decent enough welder. I've got the old straight bar out from the 72 column. So I gotta cut two and three quarter inch piece and extend that stub shaft two and three quarters of an inches. So, yeah and unfortunately this one i've got to be dead exact and it's got to be straight so this will take a little while okay real quick because i know someone's going to call me out on this especially means it's a steering shaft if you look here right there see if i can get it to focus right i did bevel my cuts so I got a real nice heavy bevel on it, and I'm using my big stick machine. Don't mind the garage being a disaster. But yes, I'm using a heavy stick machine and 7018 rod. So, maybe not the correct rod, but it'll work. Okay, got the steering shaft done. It looks okay. Goes pretty straight. Don't have a bearing up here in the steering column. So it's not exactly right. But at least now I can go to the junkyard, get a steering column for a 84 Ram charger, and it'll be the proper length when I get it home. And we now have an automatic shifter. It's not real pretty, but it's functional. We got all the gears. Get this in focus here. okay quick update got the brake lines done get that and now we reused the rear line which goes to the front brake and then i made a new line to go to the rear brakes because it had a different fitting on it so it's twisted around in every which way but hey it's custom we'll call it that in case anyone was wondering how you fly a front clip off by yourself, here's my setup. Take one strap, run it down to the core support, and take a couple of straps. There's a little vent hole down there, running around, cherry picker, slide it into place. Okay, Cookie Monster update. 6 p.m. Sunday evening, officially two weeks. We got the front clip on, motor's in, wired up, everything looks good. I did switch out to the newer style high torque starter. It's the time we've been waiting for. I got all the timing set, she should fire. Let's find out. And yes, I have it in park. And here we will get our oil pressure gauge here, right there, here we go. I got a sneaking hunch, I know exactly what's going on. 
I think I know. Yeah, I can smell the fuel. I know what's wrong. I noticed. Oh, I need to run a hot wire to my coil. Because my relay here is broken. So give me a second. Okay, so <laughs> I had a brain fart and somewhere I got the distributor 180 out. So now that I've got that fixed, let's see if she'll make a little bit of noise. Come in here. Oh. All right, give her a little bit of choke. Two pumps on the throttle. Go down here to the oil pressure. Vacuum gauge says. Oh yeah, we're sucking up fuel. Okay, our timing's way the hell off. And we don't even have vacuum right now. Turn the idle up a little bit. She runs. Well, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose when you try to reuse parts. Unfortunately, if you can see that, you can see the water pump's pissing out the weep hole. So now I gotta tear it back apart and change the water pump. 